Welcome to Electron Online. Now here we have a very interesting problem and it took a few minutes for me to actually figure out what was going on. It does deal with units and dimensional analysis. So let's read the problem. It says, in a particular system of units, a physical quantity can be expressed in terms of the electric charge, the electron mass, Planck's constant, and Coulomb's constant, where epsilon sub naught is equal to the permittivity of a vacuum. In terms of these physical constants, the dimension of the, of the magnetic field is, and here is the dimension of the magnetic field, and it should be equal to the dimensions of the uh, elect, uh, electric charge to the alpha power, the units of the mass of an electron to the beta power, the units of Planck's constant to the gamma power, and the units of Coulomb's constant to the delta power. And then you have to add those four exponents together, and the number of those, the sum of those four is what they're looking for. So first I figure, well, let's see here. The magnetic field. I thought of an equation that involved the magnetic field, and I know that the force on a charge moving to the magnetic field is equal to QVB, which means that the magnetic field is equal to the force divided by Q times V. F is a force, Q is a charge, V is the velocity. So the units of the magnetic field is equal to the units of force, which is newtons, divided by the units of charge, which is coulombs, and the units of velocity, which is meters per second. Now, newtons can be written as a kilograms meters per second squared, it's mass times acceleration, divided by coulombs divided by meters per second. So, simplifying things, I'm looking for my red pen here, simplifying some things, meters cancel out, one of the seconds cancel out, so finally I can say that the units for magnetic field can be expressed as kilograms per coulomb times seconds. So those are the units for the magnetic field. Now we have to use the units of these to some exponent to come up with the same, uh, the same result, kilograms, coulombs per second. So, uh, let's see here. The electric charge is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So coulombs is the unit for electric charge. The mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. So kilograms is the unit for this. Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. So there's a unit for Planck's constant. And K is going to be equal to Newton's uh, meter squared per coulomb squared. Because we have uh, K, that would be K times coulombs squared divided by, yes, all right, so that is correct. So which means that we have what we have here. We need kilograms in the numerator, coulombs and seconds in the denominator. All right. The electric charge is coulombs raised to the alpha power. The mass would be kilograms raised to the beta power. H is joules times second, and a joule is a newton meter. So let's work that out a little bit. Joules times seconds which is a newton meter times seconds, and a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared times meters times seconds. So, and I like to put brackets around it to indicate that these are units. So this seconds cancels out with one of those. Oh, one of those, we still keep the second around. So we end up with kilogram meter squared per second. Kilogram meter squared per second. And so those are the units for Planck's constant. So we have kilograms, meters per, a uh, meter squared per second. And that's raised to the alpha power. And then K, that's going to be equal to, oh, there we have Newtons again. So Newtons, so K, that would be Newtons, which is kilogram, meters per second squared times meter squared divided by coulomb squared. 
Wow, that's quite something. So that would be kilograms, meters cubed, divided by seconds squared, and coulombs squared. And that's going to be to the delta power. Let me write this, so kilograms right there, kilograms. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to find the correct exponents in order to have the right side equal to the left side. On the left side, we have kilograms per coulomb per second, and we need to have the same on the right side. Of course, we can have positive exponents, and we can have negative exponents. So since we have coulomb only in two places right here, and we need 1 over coulomb, then if this is to the first power, and this is to the first power, I end up with 1 over coulomb. So in other words, if I have alpha to the first power, and I have delta to the first power, coulombs would be taken care of. Then on kilograms, notice I have kilograms here, kilograms there, kilograms there. So if all of them are to the first power, I end up with kilograms cubed. That wouldn't work out really well. And notice I have seconds squared in the denominator and seconds here. So I want to get rid of at least one of the seconds. So maybe that needs to be a negative one power. So if that has a negative one power, then I have kilogram in the denominator. I have meter squared in the denominator that wouldn't get rid of the meters. So notice meters only appears twice and I need to completely get rid of the meters. And since this is to the second power and that's to the third power, I need to get this to be even. So I'm going to change this to a two. By changing that to a two and I have meters to the sixth power and I can bring this down by using this as negative, negative exponent. So if I then have this to the minus three power, this will become 1 over meters to the 6th power, meters to the 6th power, so that would take care of the meters. But since I now have a 2 here, that gives me Coulomb to the 4th in the denominator, so I need Coulomb cube in the numerator, so I'm going to make this a 3. So now I'm zeroing in on things. Let's check everything. So the Coulombs now work out. I have Coulombs to the 4th denominator, Coulombs cube in the numerator, that gives me Coulomb in the denominator. We're good. Meters. Meters to the sixth, one over meters to the sixth. I get rid of meters, so that's good. Seconds. I have seconds to the fourth in the denominator, and seconds cubed in the numerator gives me seconds in the denominator, so seconds are good. Now I have to take care of kilograms. Kilograms squared, kilograms cubed in the denominator. That leaves me with kilograms in the denominator, but I need kilograms in the numerator. That means I need beta to be equal to 2. So that gives me kilograms squared, kilograms squared as kilograms to the fourth, kilograms cubed in the denominator gives me kilograms in the numerator. Now I'm good. This, these values for the exponents will give me all the proper units on the right side to be equal to the left side. So that means that when I sum them together I get 3 plus 2 minus 3 plus 2 equals 4 which means that the sum of those four must equal four, and that is the number they were looking for. I don't know if I did this in three minutes or not. Not even close. Not even close. It takes a little while, and then it's trial and error to try to find out what the, what the combination is. It's almost like I was trying to fill out a, a chemistry equation, trying to find the proper, uh, the proper constants in front of each of the elements. So it was just a kind of a mix and match, so I started with the coulombs, 1 and 2 would work, but 2 and 3 would work as well. And I needed to do that to, in order to deal with the meters, to get rid of the meters. And then from that I can deal with the sec seconds, and then from that I dealt with the kilograms. So it's so one step at a time, and we ended up with the correct answer by going through this process. So it's kind of a lengthy process, but um, it's kind of a fun puzzle if you weren't under the pressure of trying to do this test and do each of these problems in three minutes. So there, that's the way it's done.